I'm so grateful for this opportunity to play this piece with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. As a harpist, it's always exciting to be featured in a concerto. Usually the harp is buried in the back of the orchestra somewhere near the violins and the winds. So it's a really fantastic chance to show off what the harp can do. And I think the Ginistero really does just that. It's very interesting to listen to. It has an unbelievable variety of colors and of rhythms. And I think it really shatters the stereotype that harpists are angelic and that we have to play gracefully and delicately. Gina Stero wrote music that's very nationalistic. He had a great love for his country and showed that through his compositions. It could be said that he wrote a harp concerto because the harp is such a close relative of the guitar, which is the national instrument of Argentina. In fact, throughout the harp concerto and many of his other works, he has a signature motif that he puts in. It's an ascending figure that imitates the six open strings of a classical guitar, which are E, A, D, G, B, and E. So you'll hear me play that several times in the piece. The first and the third movements both open very rhythmically and angularly, almost like a primeval syncopated dance. In fact, they're based on the Argentine Malambo, which is a dance contest for horseback riders. And this dance involves a lot of stamping of their heels, and you can really hear that come out in the music. It's written in 6-8 time, which means there are six eighth notes in every bar. And Gina Stera divides these bars up into two different and interchangeable ways. So some of the time you'll hear one, two, three, one, two, three. And other times you'll hear one, two, one, two, one, two. And sometimes they're occurring at the same time. So it's a really fascinating combination and oftentimes fight between the two divisions. I'd like to play for you the opening of the first movement. It's not as exciting without the whole orchestra behind me, but just so you have an idea of what to listen for. is contrasted by episodes that are a lot more lyrical and rhapsodic and to me quite beautiful. four percussion instruments used in this piece that will keep all the percussionists very busy back there. In one section at the end of the first movement, the harp actually becomes another percussion instrument. I'm asked to hit and tap the body of the instrument and that's going to sound like this. Throughout the work, I get to use many extended techniques or special effects, and I would love to demonstrate them for you so you know what to look for when you come to the concert. I have to play harmonics, which I do by plucking the string around the midway point and simultaneously dampening or stopping the sound, and it's going to sound kind of like a bell. I'm asked to play low on the strings, close to the soundboard, and that kind of creates an effect that sounds like a strummed guitar. Possibly the most common effect for a harpist is a glissando, and this just means gliding between pitches. And I'm asked to do this with my fingertips, and also with my nails. I bet most of you don't know that I'm actually quite busy with both of my feet as well as both of my hands. The harp has seven foot pedals 
and they control the accidentals or the sharps and flats. So what you see when you're looking here at the strings is kind of like looking at the white keys of a piano. So we don't have a G sharp string or a B flat string. I make those changes with my feet. So if I take middle C, I actually can get three different pitches by moving the pedal from the very same string. So I can go from C flat to C natural and C sharp. And what I'm doing is actually lengthening or shortening the string length, which is going to raise or lower the pitch. Now I have to make these changes with my feet very rhythmically where they correspond with the music or else I risk making a sound that's very jarring. We call it a pedal buzz. It sounds kind of like this. But Gina Stara actually calls for this to be used in the piece. Here's an excerpt from the third movement where I'm doing pedal slides. me what I find challenging about performing this particular work. So there's a lot of really fast finger work, especially in the third movement, so I'm working on tempo. And just in general, the stamina of getting from beginning to end, it's a very physical thing to be able to play this concerto. And also just focus and concentration, getting from start to finish. Mm -hmm. 